Hey everyone and welcome back to yet another video. Now today I'm going to be completing my testing of the LGA 775 tape mod and also showing you how to do it properly unlike well last time. So in my last tape mod video, which you should totally check out, there's going to be a card up on the screen right now so you can go click that and watch it right after this video. But either way, I tried it out on a Core 2 Duo E7500 which ended up not quite working properly. After some investigation of the comments section on that video, apparently the chip just ended up being clocked a little bit too high, causing it to crash. But today I'm going to be trying the exact same thing, but instead on my Q6600. Nearly all the other parts will be identical as in the last video, and for the gaming test, I'll be using the same 2GB GTX 650 from one of my previous videos. But either way, let the testing begin. <laughs> Since last time I've gotten a few more details on how the tape mod actually works and some requirements for it. Not all LGA775 CPUs will actually work with this mod. I'll be testing with my Q6600 since it's one of the most popular chips to do this mod with and it'll definitely work with the mod. So, to do the tape mod, you'll just have to put two small pieces of electrical tape on the back pads of the CPU. There's two little pads, you need two little thin strips of electrical tape, and just make sure the tape is pretty thin and aligned perfectly so as not to cover any other pins, or otherwise your PC is not going to boot after this. Of course, you can fix that by just realigning the tape if your PC isn't booting. Basically, when you cover up the two pads, the bus speed is increased and when multiplied by the multiplier of your CPU, so in the case of the Q6600, it's a 5, multiplier of 5. The final clock speed of the CPU is also increased as a result, since your final CPU clock speed is a number you get when multiplying the bus speed and the multiplier. And if you would like to know how this works a little bit more in detail, you should watch my overclocking video I did a few days back to see how all of this works. But either way, uh, that's how this mod manages to overclock your CPU. Another thing worth noting is that not all LG775 CPUs have the same multiplier, so using the tape mod may cause some CPUs to be clocked a bit too high and as a result make them unusable. This happened with my E7500 in the last tape mod video since the multiplier for that CPU is 11. And when multiplied by the increased bus speed, ended up making the CPU run well over 3.6 gigahertz. All right, with that out of the way, let's see how much of an improvement this mod can really make to your older CPU. I started by running the good old Cinebench to get a feel of how much faster the CPU became after applying the tape mod. And before applying the tape, the Q6600 scored a 225, which was improved to a score of 291 after the mod. So quite a decent improvement for some added tape. At this point, I tried out the usual set of games. So running a CSGO at a mix of high and medium settings, I saw an average of about 52 frames a second at first, which was improved to 72 frames per second after applying the tape mod. And in this game, the tape actually made a dramatic 20 FPS improvement, pushing the frame rates well above the smooth 60 FPS region. Next up, the good old Rocket League on its performance settings. The game averaged about 62 FPS without the tape mod and wasn't improved much by it either, seeing only a 2 FPS increase on average. Still playable, but I guess Rocket League doesn't really rely much on the CPU. Finally, I gave Team Fortress 2 on its high settings a quick go, noting the averages of 70 FPS before applying the mod, and already above playable frame rate, and then I saw the frame rate skyrocket to 111 after applying the tape mod. So overall, TF2 had the largest increase in performance, seeing about a 41 FPS increase. So for a small amount of tape, this mod can easily nudge some extra performance out of your older hardware, if it's compatible with the mod, of course. The good news is, it's completely harmless if you want to give it a go, as you only need to remove two strips of tape to revert it back to the original speeds. So now, all that that's left to do is test the impact of the tape mod on CPU temperatures. So firing up Ida64, the CPU ran at about 54 degrees after the mod and increased to 61 with the mod applied. So overall, temperatures stayed within reason the whole time. So now I can finally answer the question, is the tape mod worth it on older hardware? And if it wasn't quite obvious already, a bit of tape can go a long way in making your games a lot more playable on your older system. So overall, yes, the tape mod is completely worth it if you want to give it a go on any of your old CPUs, especially if you're going to be playing games games on them. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It took about a year to finish this LGA 775 investigation series, but hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'd also like to tell you about two things at the end of this video. So first off, I have a new Discord server. I basically revamped it. I'll have a link down below in the description, and if you join the server, you'll be able to talk to, well, people who like tech and stuff and things. And also me, I'll be there. I'm kind of always there because I'm kind of the server owner. And also, I'd like to tell you about my friend's new YouTube channel. It's called Homebrew Hardware. He's basically making a channel dedicated to, I guess, computer hardware and stuff like that. So there's a video up there right now. It's about the R7 250 graphics card. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to go check out that video. Uh, just in case, maybe, maybe you'll like it. Maybe you want to subscribe to him. Tell him I sent you. Anyways, guys, I'm out. I'll see you in the next one.